Our text today comes from 1 Peter in the uh, first chapter. I'm going to be reading verses 3 through 9. I'm reading from the New International Version, so it may vary from the Bible that you're carrying. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of, the, uh, of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith and the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Before I get into the message, a, a thought hit me as I was, was reading the text and I came across uh, the, the, the section that, uh, that, that reads uh, that um, you, you, you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. I remembered why of all times, you know, these funny things, you know, come across your mind. Back in um, somewhere between 1980. 83 and, and 85, Barb and I were serving at Pisgah Stenson churches, and we had a pulpit exchange. And do that or for Thanksgiving? One of those two. Cliff Shell asked me to preach here, and I preached. This text, uh, I, 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 funny how you remember things like that. Some of you might even remember that. That I preached in this pulpit long before I ever came to serve as your pastor. Hmm. Well, today I'm going to finish up the conversation and teaching on the mercy of God that we began a few weeks ago. I have to tell you that when, I, uh, when, when we awaken each morning, this question comes to my mind. When we awaken each morning, what thoughts are on our minds? Have you paid attention to that? When you awaken, what thoughts are on your mind? the things that we have to accomplish, the work ahead for the day, a situation that must be dealt with, a joy of the new day to celebrate. Uh, many things occupy our minds, and oftentimes those thoughts distract us from what we could be contemplating. Recently, I made a, a commitment to get back to something I, I used to do on a, on a daily basis. For whatever reason, and it's probably been 10 years or more, I stopped playing my guitar on a daily basis. In one way, I, I realized I don't play like I used to. I haven't been able to maintain my skill like Stephen Lorry. I don't play that way. And, and then another, there have been many distractions mingled throughout each day that just kind of steal away time. And 
the day expires and just haven't played the guitar. I want to do that again. I want to be able to engage with something that I love doing again. Yet, I must confess that I've let time steal away that joy that I get from spending time playing the guitar. So I've made a commitment to try to start doing that again. At least get better at it. Right now the fingers hurt because I don't have the calluses I once had. So it'll be two, three times a week until I develop the callus and get myself back. Because one of the things I've realized is that it was in the playing of the guitar and singing of music that I experienced the mercy of God. I experienced a sense of awe being in the presence of God. But do you know when we stop doing something that brings us joy, that reminds us of the mercy of God, we lose the ability to sense the mystery of God's mercy. God wants us to sense the mystery of His mercy. Well, this morning, one of the unusual things, and I had to add this into the message, I awakened to the sounds of an old hymn that I frequently would play and sing when I did set aside time to play my instrument. The tune of How Great Thou Art resounded in my mind. I tried to remember, Steve, if we sang How Great Thou Art last week. Maybe that's why. It, but as I was playing this week, that's one of, the, one of the songs that I played and I sang. It's one of my favorites. I enjoy How Great Thou Art. And I woke up with, uh, with the sounds of that hymn in my mind. For as long as I can remember, folks, I have played and sang this song. Even when I would play it for my dad, it was one of his favorites. And the part that really speaks to me is that part that says, And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die... I scarce can take it in. Jesus lived a life of perfect obedience and willingly went to the cross for my sins. That is the epitome of mercy. Jesus, the Most High Son of the living God, took on human flesh faithfully lived the exampled life, showed compassion and love, then surrendered himself to death on the cross. There is no other act so self-denying that we have to compare. Jesus' obedience to the will of the Father is mercy on display. Would you willingly offer up your life as a sacrifice for others? Would you willingly stand in the gap and take on your, on to your own self the sins of the world, the sins of every person, all sin? Would you stand there and allow yourself to be mocked and ridiculed and beaten and filled with pain? Probably not. But Jesus did. And because Jesus did, God made a way for all people to come to Him. We can find no other more deserving of our praise and trust than Jesus. God is truly great, and God's love and mercy is everything. 
and we gather in this sacred place to marvel at the idea that God did this for the likes of us. It is in this humble adoration that we celebrate the wonder and mystery of the mercy of God. As we continue to turn to the ultimate expression of God's mercy, Christ's willingness to die on the cross, as we reflect on this sacrificial act of Jesus, we can think about the benefit that has resulted from his obedience. Jesus willingly offered himself obediently to the Father's direction. Hmm. Looking over the greater body of work in the biblical narrative, we see occasion after occasion where God shows mercy. To God's people. There's nothing that would suggest that we can do anything, though, that deserves mercy. I think it's something that God is willing to show to those whom He loves God's mercy. We can certainly claim to the fact that God loves all of His creation, God was pleased with everything that He created. It was not until humankind marred that creation by willful disobedience that God had to find another way. But there are many biblical references to consider when we think about mercy. Scripture frequently mentions the mercy of God that moves us to the point of expressing our greatest need. Now, we can can all admit no one is perfect. And God knows that we've fallen short of His glory. Yet God still wants to show mercy to us. Now in 1 John, in the second chapter, verse 13, says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And James 2, 13 states that mercy triumphs over judgment. And Micah 6, 8 says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? Jesus states in Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And he also states in Matthew 9, 13, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And Luke 6, 36 says this, Be merciful, just as the Father is merciful. Verse after verse after verse indicates the nature of God to be merciful and for us to show mercy to others. We can contend that with every breath we take, we encounter and experience the mercy of God. Just breathe it in for a moment. Breathe it in, take a breath, and you will experience the mercy of God. It is even through the hope of our resurrection that we see mercy. Mercy is about relationship with God through Jesus and the victory he holds over sin and death. And the fact that God's mercy is bigger than any mistake we've made is really all the evidence that we need. There was a time when I had been called to visit with a man in the hospital. And during that visit, we began to talk about what is known as a near-death experience and maybe an out-of-body experience. 
but he told me that he had suffered a, a heart attack and during a time of that time of unconsciousness he said he saw himself in a in a dark place and was standing in front of what seemed to be a tunnel but at the very end of the tunnel he could see a small light and out of curiosity he started walking toward the light And the closer he got, the larger the light became until he ultimately had what he said was an encounter with God. For he said, God shook his hand and said to me, it's not your time. And as he talked about it, he talked so genuinely, so passionately about it, that it caused a chill to overcome me. Whatever our thoughts are about such happenings, what really matters is acknowledging God is merciful and has even determined the number of our days. It's not your time. When we take into consideration how impactful it was for this man and how vividly he had described the vision... It was definite that it changed his perspective and it impacted mine. It's encounters like this that we cannot deny that we see the mercy of God on display. Many people have had experiences like this, but it is how this man talked about this that convinced me that he was being genuine. So the question really is, can I, as a believer, an individual believer, become aware that I am in God's presence because of God's mercy? May I say that again? The question really is, can I, as an individual believer, become aware that I am in God's presence because of God's mercy. That I too am God's servant, called by God, commissioned by God, and trusted to do God's work of faithfully sharing mercy with others. I also ask you to ask this question, have I been faithful to the call of God on my life to make sure that others experience God's mercy as well? Mercy stirs our hearts to become passionate followers of Jesus. Yes, that is what Peter says, in all this we greatly rejoice. This life brings a certainty that we will experience all kinds of trials. Yet for the one who has experienced a heart-changing encounter with Jesus, and as Peter suggests have proven the genuineness of your faith, that even though we go through troubling times, that we can come out of them with an attitude of praise, glory, and honor because Jesus Christ has been revealed to us and has shown us mercy. This is the mercy of God. So as we conclude This series, may we be forever changed as we live out the fullest appreciation and expression of God's mercy each and every day with each and every breath that we take, with each and every act that we do, that we might be able to experience the mercy of God and to share the mercy of God with others. This we pray. Amen and amen.